All right, so the last thing that you have to do before putting this, or to get this transmission all set up, is you have to set the preload of the differential. And to do that, uh, the process is outlined in the DeLorean manual here. And it sh what, what it shows is that you, you essentially take a piece of string and you thread it through the, uh, the differential. And then you rotate the differential inward um, so that when you pull on the string, it rotates the differential. And you do it with the differential attached to, or with the string attached to a, uh, a spring, uh, a force gauge. And so, um, according to the manual, when you install new bearings, you want them to rotate, you want it to take about 10 to 30 newton meters, or 3 to 7 pounds, um, to pull them. And the reason for this is because you, you actually, um, and I'll show you, there's a nut on the side of the case that you use to preload the differential so that there's actually a compressive force on the differential so that as the uh, transmission is turning and the pinion gear is engaging the crown gear on the differential those two gears are going to try to push apart and essentially it's going to be trying to split the case and so um, instead of you, you preload the differential so that um, it's already under load so that when it tries to push it out it there's still extra load there holding it together so that you don't end up with a lot of play or um, one of the uh, effects of not having enough preload is that you will actually end up shearing teeth off of uh, your uh, crown gear from your from the pinion gear of the uh, output shaft just grinding on it so I've already gone ahead and done that here and um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this spring gauge and now this spring gauge only goes up to 20 newton meters and I can feel that right about when it hits 20, I'm probably right about 25 right now, is what it's taking to pull this, um, which is is probably pretty consistent. These bearings were replaced back in 2012, so um, they were replaced about two and a half years ago. Um, so I still expect them to have pretty, um, you know, very little play in them. Um, when the when the manual says that used bearings should turn without any um, turn freely, I, I'm not exactly sure what that means because obviously there's so much resistance here that there's always going to be some load to turn it. But um, I think the big thing is that you just really don't want there to be any slop in the bearings whatsoever, um, which would be lateral play. Um, so um, if you did need to adjust that, what you would do is you would. Um, you would adjust this large nut that you have on the side of the differential here. Um, it's this crazy looking spanner nut and there's actually a special tool made by uh, Renault for doing that and you may have to contact like a DeLorean vendor or a Lotus vendor um, for that tool or for the use of one um, because it took me years to track this one down and it is uh, Let's see, it's the bb.vi.645 tool. And um, this is what it looks like. And essentially, you put it in here, and there's a little tab here that holds this in place, but you put it in there, and that's what you would use to, to turn this nut. It's extremely fine threaded, so as you turn it, puts more load on the tapered roller bearings that are um, holding the differential together. So, but in this case, I'm not going to touch it because it's already been set and I believe it's good. According to the manual here, uh, you can, let's see, it, it tells you, I think the DeLorean manual tells you what, um, I'm not sure if it tells you which torque you want it to be at. I think it's somewhere in this section. I could be wrong. Regardless, I know you want to, um, you want the, uh, the, the big thing is that you just want to make sure that the, the differential doesn't have any play and that you, um, tighten that until you reach that, uh, three, three to seven pounds of force required in order to um, <clears throat> in order to rotate the differential so um, anyway so the last thing that you have to do um, is once you've done that 
um, go ahead and pull this string out and I'm just going to have a pair of snips here is you got to install the bell housing so uh, the bell housing is a, another um, flange that has a gasket and um, like a, just like the fifth gear one I think some people debate whether or not it's needed I still think it's a good idea to use it and so um, I am going to use the gasket um, because of that split face and I'm just going to go ahead and put two lines of sealant all the way around this one and I, j I already did that so so now this gasket has to go on here and um, that goes there and then down here I've got the bell housing itself which I did already clean but I'm going to go ahead and Make sure it's clean. Let's see. Just want to make sure any kind of debris or anything like that is not present. So, and then. So there's that. This gasket is good. These, there's an O-ring in here, but I never did pull that shaft out, so I'm not really going to worry about it. Um, and that O-ring was replaced the last time I had this apart a couple years ago. So okay, so this is ready. There are uh, there's a dowel pin here and a dowel pin here. It's already going to help line this up, so um, this should go on. Actually, before we do this, I'm just going to let this jump out. Make a mess, okay. So that goes that shaft. Line that dowel pin up. And this dowel pin up. And then. And grab a rubber mallet. Okay. That's it. And then start putting bolts in. And actually these bolts, these bolts carry a lot of load and so um, as with a lot of the other critical bolts that I've been putting in I'm going to go ahead and just put a dab of Loctite on them. Just blue 242 Loctite. And you do have two different lengths here. Though the bolts that are on the bottom are a different length than the ones that are on the sides and on the top. So just be sure that they go back where they go along. These are these go long ones right there. That's a short one. This is a long one. Start staging these. Oh, actually, this one in this upper corner is the only one in the upper area that is uh, a little bit longer than the rest, so keep that in mind.
got these ones along the bottom here, which I may or may not be able to see. And this thing is not torquing them down. It's it's really only putting about, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 foot-pounds at the absolute most on it. And that's if you really let it ride on it. And then I was not able to locate a replacement for this, so... So and since this has been a process of drawing this all together, I'm just gonna go back and torque all these. And lastly, you have to torque these all to five decanewton meters or um, Five deca newton meters, or fifty newton meters, or thirty-seven foot pounds. So, it's ready. It is already set at thirty-seven foot pounds. So perfect. There's one. This is probably too long of an extension. I'm not sure I have a shorter one handy too. Three. Four. Six. Seven. Eight. Ten. Eleven. Where's the bit? Where is the line? There it is. Twelve. And with that, this transmission is all back together. There's certainly a couple other things. The bracketry that goes on the back still has to be reinstalled, but um, none of that. None of those bolts back there really carry any load other than sealing it. So I'm going to let the um, the sealant uh, cure a little bit before attempting to remove any bolts to put any of the bracketry back on right now. So um, right now I'm just going to wipe any excess sealant that may have squeezed out. And then um, that's it. So... Hope this was valuable. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. And uh, yeah, actually, I'll probably show the uh, installation of these flanges next. So.